one question I get is from you, particularly younger people saying, I don't really understand what my life's task is. I call that a master your life's task. Please help me, Robert. The earlier you figure it out, the better off you are, but it can happen later in life. Now, I figured out at an early age that I wanted to write. I didn't know what I wanted to write, but I loved words and I loved writing. And if I didn't have that connection when I was eight years old, all the way into high school and college, I would have been a lost soul. And I empathize with a lot of people who don't have that feeling when they're eight or 18 or in their 20s. But I am trying to tell people everybody has it. You're just not listening to yourself. You've lost touch with who you are, the core of your being. You're on social media too much. You're listening to what other people are telling you. You're listening to what your parents told you you should be doing in life. You're listening to what your friends think is cool. You gotta cut all that shit out. You gotta listen to yourself. You have to be patient. It's not going to come like a light bulb in your head. Ah, I was meant to do this. I was meant to write the 48 Laws of Power. That's not how it works. It takes time. To do anything in life takes time and hours and patience and work. I recommend starting a journal and such and writing down some of the things that I think are important to you. So I like to tell people to go back to their earliest childhood memories of things that really excited them before they got mixed up with parents and teachers and all that other people telling them stuff, you know? Like for me, it was words and language. I just was entranced by the sound of language itself, right? It was like music to me. You had something like that. There's a book I recommend. It's a bit technical, but it's a brilliant book called The Five Frames of Mind by Howard Gardner. The point of this book is that there are five forms of intelligence. We normally associate intelligence with intellectuals, with our Noam Chomsky, with Albert Einstein. And he says, no, intelligence comes in all forms. Working with your hands is a form of intelligence. A carpenter has a high form of intelligence. People who are sports, who are athletic, who use their body, that's another form of intelligence. There's music, there's math, there's language. You have one of these frames of mind. By the way your brain is wired, you, have, you are inclined towards one of them. Figure that out. If you are somebody who's word oriented and you end up going into a field that's about math or about numbers, you're in for a lot of pain in life, right? So you've got to figure that kind of what I call primal connection to some kind of field. You have to look at the things that you love and the things that you hate, right? So early on entering the work world, I figured out that I don't like working for other people. I hate to say it. I'm, some of it maybe maybe I'm antisocial in my car. I don't know. I hope not. But I don't like working for other people. I don't like all the politics, all the crap you have to put up with. I realized early on I should gotta be working for myself, right? So what you don't like is very instructive to you, right? You're looking at things that are very powerful inside of you, that are emotional. They're not intellectual, they're thoughts, they're I'm sorry, they're feelings, they're emotions, they're visceral things that you connect to, right? I've always been fascinated by our earliest ancestors. When I was eight years old, I wrote a novel, probably the worst novel ever written in the history of mankind. And it was about the first human beings on the planet. And it was written from the point of view of a vulture watching these humans arrive. Stupid idea. But I was fascinated with early history of our origins, our roots, when I was very young. And that's subject continues to fascinate me. If I ever read an article about, about Neanderthals and all the discoveries going on about their DNA, and I could read that forever. It's so fascinating. You have something like that. I know you do. And I am completely egalitarian. I believe everybody has that. When I wrote the book Mastery, which is what this book is about, to prove my point that everyone has it, I interviewed contemporary masters. And one of them is the woman, Temple Grandin, who was born with high level autism, right? She was going to be hospitalized for her entire life. She, when she was two or three years old, she had the good luck of finding the right teacher who brought her out of her shell. And she eventually became a, a very um, respected professor of animal research, right? She's absolutely brilliant. She also studies autism itself. If somebody with that kind of disability that kind of thing, you know, everything stacked against her. If she can reach, she can figure it out and reach mastery, then I certainly believe everybody has that potential. 
But I know it doesn't come easy. It's a process and you have to be patient, but you have to put in the work. We have so many young people who watch this show, tune into our content. And, and they're filled with all sorts of pressures right now, all sorts of things that feel distracting. What's your advice for the 20 year olds that are out there right now, dealing with a world that's very different than potentially how you and I grew up, but what's your advice for young people? Well, um, it's, it's don't be too hard on yourself and um, be patient. And so it's a kind of a mix that you have to go through, a bit of a dance. So on the one hand, you want to be serious about life. You're not, life doesn't go on forever. Your youth will be over in 10, 12 years. You better believe it, it goes faster than you can imagine, right? Okay, so take it seriously, all right? So you, can, you, you want to realize what your life's task is. You want to develop those skills that will make it so when you're in your 30s, things will come together as they fortunately did for me. It's a common story that 31, 32 is, is that year where things turn around for people, right? But on the other hand, you don't want to be so damn serious, so damn you know, you know, uh, linear in your thinking. I've got to head down this path to make this amount of money, etc. You're young. Have some fun, have some adventure, have some excitement. But at the same time, also have that sense of discipline and that sense of purpose. You can do both things at the same time. Now the circumstances now, it's easy for me, a boomer, I have to admit that, to preach to you when you have to gone through like two, we've gone through a pandemic, a major, a, what looks like to be a recession. And then if you're a millennial, you went through another, you went through the crash in 08. It's easy for me to preach. You're dealing with really difficult circumstances. And there's what they call what the great resignation now, is that it, right? So a lot of people are rethinking their lives. They don't want to work at crap jobs just to get by. And I applaud that 100%, right? That's great. So you want to think about working for yourself is the ultimate position in this world. And even though times are difficult, even though it may seem like a, just a dream, there's so much potential out there for entrepreneurial spirit, for creating your own startup, for creating your own podcast, for going your own path in life. You don't have to follow other people. It's not like it was when I was growing up. There were things that were better back then, but there are things that were a lot worse, right? You have so many more options. It's just that you're not going to reach them. You're not going to be happy in this short time that you have to be alive unless you take it seriously, unless you learn skills and develop and go through an apprenticeship in your 20s, etc. So um, if you can balance those two and still have some fun and adventure and excitement like I did, I mean, I don't want to hold myself up as some model, but you know, being an Irishman in Paris in my early 20s, you know, I was having adventures, right? So just don't listen to your parents go, I got to be making $100,000 when I'm 23 and go to law school and do all this stuff, you're going to burn out. So kind of understand your, I guess the main thing I would say is know who you are, know what, what you're, what you're, you know, deep down your core, what you love, what you hate, and what you were destined to create in this world. That's like the most important process you can go through. Robert, you've written about you know, so many laws across your books. I'm curious if there are three principles that you feel like are most important for people to keep in mind and to live by. Well, uh, one of them is a law of power that I've kind of lived by, vert, you know, consciously and inadvertently, which is interaction with boldness. So most people are just too timid in life. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of making mistakes. If I never try anything, that I never have to put up with criticism, never have to put up with people scrutinizing me, right? So most people end up being too shy, too timid in life. And you've got to get over that. And you've got to learn how to be bold with your ideas and with your actions. So I try to make each one of my books kind of a statement and, and impress people with like a strong, you know, idea and not be afraid of criticism and not being afraid of controversy. So boldness it's gotten me through life and I think it's critically important in, in this day and age. The second thing is something we've talked about earlier, but it's knowing who you are, knowing yourself in depth, shining that mirror, looking inside, deep inside of you, who you are and what makes you different. 
and going through that process in as profound a way as possible to, sh to know, to understand deeply what makes you an individual, what separates you from your parents, your siblings, and your peers. And so that it's like having a radar system in you. So I know this about me, and now this person is offering me this job. No, that's not who I am. That's not suited for me. Get out of here. Somebody offers me something else. Yes, that's me. Okay, I'll take it. It's like an internal radar system that'll guide you through life. The third thing is, it's knowing about yourself, but it's also knowing about people. And it seems like an easy thing, but the problem most people have is we are self-absorbed. We're more interested in our own thoughts and ruminations and our own ideas than, what, than thoughts and ideas and experiences of other people. We will deny it, we'll, go, we'll die kicking and screaming, saying, no, that's not true, but it is true. It's because you're not listening to other people. You're not really fascinated by other people. And I'm saying empathy and the ability to truly listen to people and to get inside their skin and understand how they think, how they experience the world, how it's different to be them and what they're like, is a, not only a great form of therapy, because it gets you outside yourself, it gets outside of your own self-absorption, but it's a very powerful tool it will allow you to understand people on a deep level, understand their psychology, so you won't be making all kinds of mistakes and saying things that exactly the wrong thing to say to this person or that person. So developing a high level sensitivity to people, and it begins with being fascinated by people and their differences in their world. And that's to me an extremely important skill in life.